<clears throat> hey, what's up YouTube? This is Drew Meyer with Meyer Construction. Uh, this series is going to be on restoring this barn behind me. Um, as far as I know, <clears throat> it's probably 100 years old. It's actually structurally very sound. Uh, this is my grandparents' place. This barn was here uh, way back when they moved in, and I believe the maybe the 70s. Um, basically we're going to start off replacing any broken or rotten car siding <clears throat> to match this the existing siding i'm having to kind of make custom uh car siding uh or just using a panel uh router bit and kind of uh trying to match it has been difficult <clears throat> also we're gonna replace the windows um that have been broken out and basically just as far as the siding there's a few spots that are a little rough but all in all it's in good shape it's going to need repainted and then the main thing is these doors and then for the hayloft up top uh the trim boards are rotted out um so kind of some hardware and fixing some rot with the doors uh but other than that it's actually in pretty good shape. See this door here is just the uh, trim boards rotten. A few boards need replaced on the actual barn doors or the Dutch doors. But I'll kind of show you inside. This actually was a stable, needs cleaned out too, but here's the tack room. Um, <clears throat> You can see all the uh, one by one by ten, but here's all your stalls over here, which I'll get video. There's a bunch of junk in here right now, but you can see to fit, get those windows back, allow a lot of lighting in here, get those stables cleaned out. So I'm trying to match the original car siding. You can see that profile is kind of like a raised panel you would see on cabinets. The car siding that's available to me right now is got a very um, kind of sharp profile versus that gradual sweep. So what I'm doing is, you know, for a side-by-side -side comparison, so to try and match that, roughly the dimensions are the same. I set up my uh, router table and just put a raised panel bit in there. And it's actually, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. Once I run it through the uh, router table with that raised panel bit, it's not perfect, but it's close enough that it really doesn't, you don't catch it with your eye. So once it's painted and everything's cocked and prepped, it'll be just fine. So basically all I'm doing is I have to run every piece through my router table quick. And uh, then once I get it installed, I'll go back with my sander. Things like this are just something you kind of deal with when you're working on really old stuff. You have to get creative and just find a way to kind of match old moldings, trims, uh, siding and whatnot. But it makes things kind of fun. And if you take your time uh, and get creative, you can get some pretty good results. So you can see from that original profile, it makes a big difference.
What's up, YouTube? So I'm working on this barn restore and uh, as replacing the siding, basically the bottom timber, the bottom plate is a four by six. I think it may, may be just from over the years, this barn's probably a hundred years old. It's actually in really good shape, just a few spots. Um, you can see the rot in certain parts of the bottom timber. So what I'm doing is kind of mortising and make and uh, leaving any solid material that's there. And then um, kind of like a scarf joint uh, with construction adhesive. And then I'm gonna use really big tap cons to come down in and where the studs were rotten. I'm basically, you know, um, tacking on some lumber that's here in the barn, some really old timber. That's kind of cool. I wish I was using it for a uh, like a farmhouse table. You can see all the it's old growth lumber. It's still got the mill marks. It's actually really cool. But so we're getting the bottom timber replaced. I'll kind of show you the inside. So you can see this beam runs. There's two beams on each side and that carries all the joist. So what I'm doing is that's actually the beam load point. So that's why I'm taking my time to um, replace that. And then I think I'm gonna add uh, maybe a doubled up two by eight and just make this kind of like a column all the way down to the uh, foundation just to kind of shore it up and make sure everything's locked in. But really I'm only spanning eight foot here. There's a post. But yeah, so I'm, you can kind of see what I did here. You can see this barn, <coughs> like that lead in brace is all rotted. So I'm going to replace the lead in brace. Um, but you can see they used hay as insulation up about four feet in the walls. It's always cool working on these old projects, seeing how they did things. The time this barn was built, this is like the lumber they would use. But look at all those growth rings <clears throat> and how dense the, and hard these boards are. And you know, they're actually fully dimensional. And you can still see the sawmill. Um, someone in the comments let me know. I'm guessing that's Doug Fur. You always wonder, compared to how we build uh, homes today and structures, what our stuff will look like in 100 or 150 years compared to back then when they had superior lumber. Um, now we have obviously modern building products and everything to flash it and butyl tape and sealants and um, compared to what they had, but it's pretty impressive to look at a structure like this of the modest uh, tools they had and really how good of carpenters they were and how their works, you know, their work has uh, stood the test of time and the elements um, I think this barn, I don't even know when the last time it was painted. It's all this cedar car siding has really held up well. So since this beam is carrying this whole side of joist, and I need to open up this wall and replace that column, I'm just going to put a temporary... Uh, column right here catch the end of this load and that way you know I'll be sure that nothing's gonna sag once I open that wall up so I'm working to resolve the structural issues here the bottom plate and going up on the studs just a slight bit in certain areas were rotten. So I braced off uh, my gable wall on the interior. And now what I'm doing is I'm gonna cut off up to where my studs are solid and then also remove the bottom plate that's rotted. And then I'm using construction adhesive and four by six timbers with um, concrete anchors down into the footing and that's going to really shore it up you can see i've worked my way along here and got all this taken care of doing these roughly 
every four foot or depending on where my splice was but you can see that's rock solid here's my column coming down um, using construction adhesive here i did this little scarf joint <clears throat> but here's another column the floor joists are running this way so essentially the wall to the columns to the another wall <clears throat> But I have to cut out about eight feet here and scab in all those studs. And then I got two lead in braces I'm going to replace. And then we'll be good to finish the siding on the back. When you're doing structural repairs like this, it's always a good idea to take your time and to make sure and brace uh, wherever you can, shore things up. This is your opportunity now where if anything is sagging, um, you can take a bottle jack and you know make up a jack stud a two by four essentially nailed in a t and use that to get everything back to level uh take a string line like you could string line your top plate and that way to take out any deviation here i'm not worried about it it's i don't have any issues where it's sagging so basically i'm going to fix this side and then we'll be back to siding and putting in some windows and then I got to rebuild the doors.